Welcome to the Knits and Things Podcast. My name is Heather. Today is Friday, May 30th, 2014. This is going to be episode 26, I believe. Anyway, it's going to be called Summer Planning. So I tried to record um, a little more than two weeks ago, and it was crap. <laughs> so I spared everyone and didn't publish it because you would have been seasick watching even two minutes of it. The camera was not steady at all, which I kind of knew, but I thought I was controlling it a little bit more. And then I edit, I usually record everything at one time, and then I go back and I try and chop up the segments and put in those cute little segment breaks and all. Um, and when I was doing that, it was horrible. <laughs> so I just decided to be kind and not make anybody watch that. So I have a lot to catch up on with you today. Um, so let's see. So since I recorded, I actually, when I was recording, it was Monday afternoon, um, when they were going to be airing the, or when the Dancing with the Stars finals were going to happen. Um, and I love that. I don't know if you've, you've probably heard me mention before, you might've heard me mention before, and I know I posted on Instagram and Facebook about it, um, that I always join, well, I have always joined the Pools on Ravelry <laughs> for um, Dancing with the Stars and Survivor. And they both end around the same time. I'm a little warm. Sorry. They both end around the same time um, in, the, in the spring and the fall. Well, last year, last spring, I was in Survivor and Dancing with the Stars, and I won. Um, I think last year it was Kelly Pickler for Dancing with the Stars and... Um, my man Cochran on Survivor, if you if you watch that. He was um he was so cute. He was like the nerdy guy and he was like the Survivor fanatic. He grew up on Survivor. He was only like maybe thirty at the most, probably not even. So he had grown up kind of, you know, watching Survivor and he was just the biggest fan. And so when he would win immunity challenges and find the idols and everything, it was just so fun to watch him because he was so excited and he was so into playing the game. It was so cute. So I was so excited that I won that year. Um, and then I joined again in the fall, like I always do, and didn't win and paid out my, my gift. So what happens is you sign up at a pool, in a pool and whoever has the winning player at the end, everybody sends them yarn or gift certificates or whatever, you know, yarny type goodness, um, for winning, for having the winning player. And so I, I paid out my share, but... I won again this spring for both Survivor and Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> so I had um, on Dancing with the Stars, oh, it made my heart feel so good. I have all, I've watched Dancing with the Stars. I think the beginning season I kind of watched on and off like, what is this? And then the next season I watched, um, and it was like a treat where I would let my son, before he went to bed, I would let him watch one dance. He'd have to take a shower and he would watch one dance and then go to bed. <laughs> um, and he liked watching it because the girls were half naked. Oh my gosh. And so that he was probably five at the time. I don't know. It was so cute though. Cause one day he said, mommy, if with her dressed like that, talking about one of the half, half dressed dancers or undressed dancers as the case may be with her dressed like that, he, meaning the partner would want to touch her. <laughs> So I used to kind of, you know, bait him with getting into the shower and getting all ready for bed. Let him watch one show, one dance, and then off to bed you go. So I kind of, you know, really started getting into, into it about then. Um, so I've always watched it, and I've always loved the the main pro dancer that I've loved is Maxim Schmierkowski. Good Lord, that man is beautiful. Anyway, and so he, it was his first season when he'd never act, take, taken somebody all the way to the win of the of the season. So I was very excited. He had Meryl, um, I don't even remember her last name, but she's Meryl and Charlie from the ice dancing, the USA ice dancing couple. Um, so I was very excited that they won. They won. And then on Survivor, I was had a little bit of mixed feelings <laughs> because I had like the villain of the season. He was so uh, evil, devilish, dastardly. I don't know what else to say, how else to describe him, but he was not a nice player. Um, but it came down to the end and really he, he want, you know, he had been playing the best game, which is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to reward, reward the person that 
that is the best at outwinning, outlasting, and outplaying. So, <sighs> oh well. So, but, and I'm, I'm definitely not upset that I won. I'm kind of, you know, mixed feelings that it was with such a dastardly player. <laughs> so, that happened two weeks ago. And I put up, you know, my little wish list and everything. Although, just like last year when I won, it's coming up on um, June 1st is our local fundraiser walk for juvenile diabetes. It's the JDRF, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, um, which we have walked every year since Zachary was diagnosed. And the first one was just a few months after he'd been diagnosed. Um, and we've walked every year. Team Zachary. Go Team Zachary. <laughs> um, so I put in there, I always put in there that, you know, I really don't need yarn. So I put in for, um, you know, the link for people to donate to the charity if they would like. And I've, I've, I want to say I've gotten like half and half. I've gotten some gift certificates. I had one um, friend that said that they were sending another little gift through the mail. Um, but then I've had about half the people that responded that went ahead and gave to the charity. So whatever they would normally put in for the pool, they just went ahead and, and um, paid out through the donation. So I thought that was very nice and very timely. Um, although this year I don't quite know how the walk is going to go. One of my other things to update you on is my child who broke his foot this week. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, you might know already, goes to the same school where I teach for now. This is like the last, our last two weeks together because he's a sixth grader and sixth grade is the last grade level in my school. He moves on to middle school after that, which is a whole nother story. Um, so he's, in the school where I am and he goes to because he won't sit in my classroom after school and do his homework or read a book or play on the computer he has to be like up underneath me and distracting me and I can't get anything done so he goes to aftercare <laughs> we pay for him purposely to go to aftercare so mommy can get her work done um, and a couple times he's come down before with an ice pack and sat in my room because he hurt himself. And I think the, the people there kind of feel like, oh, well, his mom's there. It'll make him feel better. Let's just let him go sit with her. So I'm sitting with my um, teammate, and we're doing our planning for the week. And in he comes with the, with the lead teacher for the aftercare. And I'm like, oh, what happened? Oh, well, he was playing over by the swings and the chains, and he kicked a pole. I'm like, he kicked a pole? What in the world? I'm like, okay, he can sit down here with me for a while. I'll send him back if he's if he's able to come back. Okay, so he sits down, and I see he's got an ice pack, and he has kind of a pained look on his face, I'll admit. So he sits down and proceeds to take off his shoe and take off his sock and hold his foot out to me. And I look at it, and his toenail is white. So you know how your nails grow out, and you've got the nail that's attached to the bed, and then you've got the white, his entire toenail was white and the skin around it was all red and I'm just like what in the world what is that it was so my co-worker had been sitting with me and also the music teacher from the building had been sitting with me because I was helping her with a hat she's knitting so everybody's looking and we're like what in the world did you do so then he admits because he my child is full disclosure I don't have to worry about him doing anything too too off I don't think ever because he Full disclosure, he will always tell me exactly what's happened. So he says to me, well, and he, he put in the little caveat first. Tyler was hitting me, so I tried to kick him. And he moved, and I kicked the pole. So he, like, he was like winding up to kick his buddy. The buddy has sense and is quick enough to move out of the way. And he kicked with just some soft running shoes on because it was a non-uniform day for the fun stuff for the sixth graders. So he's wearing just a little soft shoe and kicked a metal pole like this. So I'm looking and I'm thinking, your toenail is going to come off. So I'm like, let's go down and see the nurse. We go down to the nurse and she's like, oh no. She's like, I don't have clippers here or anything. She's like, who cuts his nails? Somebody's going to have to cut that nail off. It's going to come right off talking about and by this time now he's crying tears his toes throbbing the nail is hurting oh. long story short we go to urgent care I'm speeding down the shoulder flashers flashers on I'm holding him with one hand you know holding his hands with one hand driving with one hand speeding down the shoulder 
it was a mess. So the the initial finding at the at the urgent care, the doctor there said, "Oh, yep, I see a hairline fracture." And I thought at first I thought I'm here for this toe. You need to remove this toenail because that's the big problem and that's what's causing him the pain. And they're like, well, we need to take an x-ray. I'm like, go ahead and take an x-ray if you want to. I don't think it's broken. Because his foot hadn't started swelling yet. Um, his foot's not broken. It'll be fine. No, come to find out. They were talking hairline fracture. And w from what it looked like on the x-ray, you could see a fracture. Well, after the, the real radiologist read the x-rays and we took it actually to an ortho um, orthopedic doctor yesterday... They both were saying, well, we're really hesitant to say it's actually fractured because it's right along where the growth plate would go. I, I assume that, so if you're looking at my hand rather than his foot, and let's use these fingers. So this is the big toe. This is the second toe. This, it was like right in here where you could see it would kind of split where you could, like it had bent over. And I guess what they're saying is that's a growth plate and there's a space there anyway. And he had widened it a bit because of the injury, because of kicking it and jamming it. But it would go right back. So he's wearing a, a walking foot, a walking boot right now. One of those big stiff black boots that his foot is not moving at all. It's um, it's a lot like walking around, he said, in um, in a, his boots for um, snowboarding. <laughs> um, so he's in that for two weeks just to let it be still and relax and rest and then hopefully he'll be cleared to go back to being active and everything. Um, the doctor did allow him to go swimming. As a matter of fact, he just stopped by and grabbed his things after swim practice. Um, but yeah, broke his foot. <laughs> broke a toe, I guess. So that's my child's, that's my child's story. <laughs> um, and like I said, he is gearing up for his sixth grade graduation. Um, we're making decisions about middle school. We found out that he did not get into the performing arts program. Um, it's a full class. Going from sixth grade into seventh grade there is really hard because they already have made a new class for from fifth grade going into sixth grade. They add a class for um, like outside lottery type situations in the county. Um, I'm looking at my computer doing weird things. Sorry. Um, and he did not make it in. So, we're trying to decide what to do. The middle school that he he slated to go to just because that's the elementary school that he went to, so then this is the middle school he'll go to, is now an IB school, International Baccalaureate School. Um, and that's kind of appealing. But the this is not the best county <laughs> to be to attend public school in. Uh, it's not it's not the best of neighborhoods anymore. I'm very leery about walking around in certain neighborhoods, um, being out and alone as a woman in certain neighborhoods. It's just not, it's not what it used to be. I grew up in this neighborhood, but it, and it's, but it's not the same. It's not the same at all. It's changed a lot. And the school where I teach is a very nice school. Um, it's going through some changes too, though. And I just, I worry about the choices that he'll have to make if he continues with public school here. Just down the road, a piece is a di little bit different story. Where my sister lives is a very different story. She's a county over. And everyone there that I've heard talk about the schools loves the schools. Um, and it's it's time for us to hit the road, I think, too. My son and I moved in with my parents when I was divorcing, and it's been a very good setup, a very good situation for this time. Um, I, as a grown woman living with my parents, <laughs> have been tested time and time and again, here and there. My son loves it, though, so I've kind of stuck it out for him, and I think truly my mother loves it. Um, sometimes I'm not too sure about my dad. <laughs> I think he wants his house to himself. Um, but I think that now is probably the time. So we're probably looking at moving. We may look at paying out of county to out of county tuition for part of a year or maybe a full year until we can truly find the place where we want to be. Because I don't want to just move for the sake of moving and then move again and then move again and then move again. So we're we're looking. We're deciding. We're 
looking at our options here. The one good thing, he's very excited that if he goes to um, this other county, he can play lacrosse as a sport in his school, where if he stayed here in this county, lacrosse is in the schools now, but it was only put in there a year, maybe two ago. So it's only a club. It's not a sport. It has to catch on and it has to, I don't know all the ins and outs, but it's not going to be a sport for him. It would be just a club unless something changes very quickly, which I don't see it happening. So that's all the personal stuff going on. Blah. Lots and lots of stuff. It's also the end of school. Uh, swim, season, swim season is starting up. <sighs> Crazy stuff. Lacrosse ended. So, ah. Uh, there's lots going on. Not the least of which is knitting. So let's get into the knitting. So for thing one, I said this is going to be called summer planning. This was originally originally going to be called um, owl planning for because I was looking at doing uh, most of what I have on the needles right now, finishing them up um, for an owl. Um, actually casting them on because I've casted on a lot of things in the month of May and I was looking at doing them as an owl which is a bigger project in the whole Harry Potter world and then uh, there's a lot of hoops you have to jump through for that and I just did not feel like I had the time to jump through them this time so I withdrew my owl I'm gonna work on my projects over the summer at a nice leisurely play leisurely pace get done what I get done submit what I can for my house cup and go with it for that so what I've been working on, let's talk about, let's talk about what's been on the needles and then I'll show you the new things. So here is my Vigente or Vigence if you want to try and be correct, but I think it still sounds funny. So this is my Vigente. Um, I've worked on it a little bit. So here's my marker from last time. The gold marker is where I was last time. The purple marker is where I am now. I've been working on this a lot. Well, I've been working on this a little bit more because I found a book that I like to read. And I'm finding that with this, it's such repetitive stockinette that I really still get antsy. Even if I'm watching a TV show, I still get very antsy just doing this because it's so very repetitive. So I feel like the reading of the book is a little bit more engaging to my mind <laughs> that I'm able to, to work on that while I read. And I'm zoom, zoom, zooming along um, a little bit more. So again, that's um, The Ajante by Martina Bem. Um, it's a lace weight, fingering weight, humongous cowl, scarf, shawl that will cover my whole body if I want it to, drape around my neck if I want it to. And I think it's going to be really good this summer with air conditioning and different temperatures and everything else. So... That is there. That's being plugged away on. I still have quite a bit in the first ball. I still have quite a bit in the first ball of yarn, and it's supposed to take two balls of the lace weight. So I still have quite a lot to do, I think. Um, and I'm knitting that on a size 4 needle. Um, I also have Zuzu's Petals. I was supposed to finish this up for a knit along with my... Um, yarn snobs and I ran short so here it is it's almost finished and I really like how the lace pattern turned out really really like it so but I'm running out because this is all I have left and I actually cut across I cut across and started doing the final lace repeat early so I'm probably gonna take this back to these eyelets and hold off on this white because I have some other hand spun white that I think I can add in that will kind of save the day. Where did I put it? I know I have it, I know I have it, I know I have it. There it is. Sorry for the extreme close up. So I have this hand spun as well. And this is very much like the white here. I'm thinking it's a little thicker though. Yeah, I think it is. This is actually only a two ply as well. But I think it will do good for subbing in and giving me a little extra yardage so that I can finish out the very last repeat here. If, and I was thinking that I would go back and put this in first before the solid white, but now that I'm holding it up, I'm wondering if I'm wondering if I can't just go ahead and finish the white, finish the 
this skein of hand spun that I started with and then do that afterwards. I don't know, but this has a little bit of purple to it as well. So, I don't know, this, so this is Zuzu's Petals and it is not quite finished yet. Hopefully soon it would probably take one evening worth of work to get it finished down there. I don't know. I don't know that it would be hateful if I finished the, finished the skein that was there and then put in this one to finish off the lace repeat. We'll see, especially since this seems to be a little bit thicker. And it's very similar. And there's very little on this first skein that is true white. There's maybe going to be a yard of the true white. Most of it has a little bit of purple in it anyway. So I don't know. Oh, and there's a big grease spot from my wheel. I need to take my wheel apart and clean it, which I have not done since I got the wheel. So it's probably a little overdue. So that is Zuzu's Petals. I do not remember the pattern writer's name for that one, but it's a very cute pattern. Just a little scrunchy cowl, and it will look like, it'll look more like a shawl that's been draped around when I'm done without having any ends sticking out. So I really like that. And that same designer has several other patterns that are very similar in construction, and so I want to look into a couple of those. Um, yeah, I want to look into a couple of those to knit as well. Okay, so I also had, I think, I don't know if I started, I think I had started the socks before, yes, I had started socks, oh, but I had started my Cracker Jack cowl, let me show you that before I get into these. So my Cracker Jack cowl, I had to take out and restart, so when I was first doing it, I was using some hand spun blue as a home as an away loss, and I was using a skein of mystery gray as an away loss. Did I say that right? The hand spun blue was an away win. The mystery gray was an away loss. Both of them were a very different gauge than the two home yarns, so I switched. <laughs> I went back and actually restarted the entire cowl. So, now I have, and I also corrected the bottom. My sister and I were debating back and forth as to whether or not I had started my shawl wrong, my cowl wrong, and I did. So, <laughs> I went back through. So, now I have this bright blue, which is um, an old skein of Creatively Dyed, and I love this yarn. Oh, I love this yarn. The bright blue is an old skein of Creatively Dyed, and that's to signify an away win. The dark gray is Leading Men Fiber Arts, and that's to signify a home loss. The navy blue is, I have different skeins of mystery navy blue from my stash because I have tons of navy blue yarn. Um, this is for a home win. And then the light gray, so hopefully you can see a difference between the light gray and the dark gray. But the light gray is for an away loss. So look at that big stretch of home wins and the big stretch of away losses. <laughs> so I restarted the cowl and I'm up, I'm up to something horrible, something pitiful. May 8th <laughs> is my next day to do and I have them, I have everything written down from the website. I was able to go back and find it. Um, so I'm only up to May 7th. My next day is May 8th to put everything in there and I think I'm going to like this much better. I like the tones. I like that it's very, um, it seems more unified this way with the more calm blue and the the gray that's a little that's very close to the first gray so I think I'm gonna like it and this is a pattern called Cracker Jack it's free it's a concept scarf um, I'm doing it to match along with the Nationals um, you could do it to match along with ba with basketball um, baseball definitely anything that has a high number of games per season would probably be probably be good unless you did I guess if it was something with a shorter season a shorter number of games per season you would just do a bigger stretch of rows per game to make sure that you had enough of a cowl to make it all the way around your neck and so with the way a baseball season goes and as many games as they play this should be able to be um, a whole infinity scarf is what I'm hoping for so that's Cracker Jack and I really like the way it feels um, I did want to show you my joins so this is the side where the yarn comes out, and I'm carrying everything up. I've only been, since I restarted, I've only been twisting the yarn around the new skein, around the new yarn, 
each time I start a new color. I have not been twisting it every time. So here's what it looks like inside. So I only twist it when I start a new, a new color. If I'm still knitting with the same color, I just kind of let them go. And then I twist it when I start the new one, and then I let them go, and I twist it again. And that seems to be creating a little bit more of a cohesive seam. I had a very noticeable seam before. That, and that's kind of noticeable, but I think to someone who's not a knitter, they won't notice. So, And if it's somebody who is a knitter and they notice, I'm going to call them out for being rude. So... <laughs> So, and, and I don't think it looks too bad at all. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be very nice when it's finished. I mean, there is a little bit of a, of a jog because I'm not doing the jogless join or whatever. Um, but I think I like it. I definitely like it. I think it's going to be fun. And I think it's going to be very nice and warm because it's a worsted weight yarn. So very nice. So that is Cracker Jack. And I'm knitting the Cracker Jack on size, I want to say those are size eight needles, no, they're size seven. These are my high highs, um, or some of my high highs, and they are the size seven, which is 4.5 millimeters. Yes, 4.5 millimeter. So I think those are the things that I had on the needles the last time I recorded. I also started my, I started the Afterthought Heel sock by Laura Linneman. And so this is being done with some red that um, my friend Gabriella Kaz sent me from Ravelry. She lives in Sweden. Yes, she lives in Sweden. And she and I connected through the Single Hand Knits podcast because we're both runners and we, were, we wanted to um, share yarn to use for socks. So she sent me the red yarn to use in socks. And I sent her some of the runs with scissors yarn. So and that's so that's what this is. It's the a red toe. I'm gonna do a red toe, a red heel, and maybe even a red cuff. Um, and then the runs with scissors is gonna be the foot. And so I'm just gonna keep knitting and knitting and knitting. I should probably refer back to the pattern eventually to see exactly what I need to do for the afterthought heel. But I know that if I skip, if I miss it, like if I happen to take it with me and I just need some knitting and I pass the point where I should have put the yarn in for the heel, I would just go ahead and suck it up and try the, the full cut method where you go back and you snip live knitting and fix stitches back up. I would have a little wine and I would hold my breath the whole time, but I would do it. So that's one sock, just plain vanilla, afterthought heel, and I'm following the Laura Linneman pattern, which is free on Ravelry. But I'm also knitting, did I bring it up here? Did I bring it up here? Oh, did I bring it up here? I'm also knitting a pair of Mystic Spiral Socks. They're here. Yes. I'm knitting a pair of Mystic Spiral Socks and I'm just about finished with the first one. They look so awesome. They look very awesome. So this is Mystic Spiral by, I'm gonna say Josh Ricks. I've heard people say Rikes. I would pronounce R-Y-K-S as Ricks, so I haven't talked to Josh in person to ask him. <laughs> so if he, if he would like to correct me, he may. I'm going to say Ricks for now. So this is my left sock. I have the OMG heel, as it was written in the pattern, which to me fits very nicely. And I did the cuff, and I've done started the ribbing. I need to do a couple more rounds of ribbing, and then cast off and start the second one. So very fun sock, very quick to knit. I did go back a little bit here. I was trying to knit this at um, the drive-thru <laughs> a couple weeks ago, and it wasn't working. I was increasing at the wrong point or the wrong place. I was, something was off, and it wasn't working out. So I did have to go back a little bit, but only because I wasn't really paying attention. Very nice pattern, very speedy way to do a sock because you're so engaged and you're so interested to see what's happening next. And the yarn is Desert Vista Dye Works. I have the label here somewhere. The yarn is Desert Vista Dye Works in the colorway juice box. There's the label. And I'm knitting it on my Chinese size ones. 2.25 size ones. 2.25 millimeter size ones. So that is... Those are my socks.
And I think I'm knitting the Afterthought heel on 2.25 as well. Yes. Yes, I'm knitting that on 2.25s as well. And those are the carbons, where it's the, the carbon material here with the metal tips. So, and I really like these. I do feel a little bit of a, of a divot there where the metal joins the carbon. Um, but I don't think for sock yarn that it's too bad or too distracting. So, I like this. They're nice and light. Okay, and one of these days I got a request from a local friend that's in the um, Bowie Knitters group to do a review on needles. And so I'm going to put a little more thought into that than just my normal off-the-cuff, kind of off-the-top-of-my-head plan. So you can look for that coming up soon. Maybe, um, maybe that'll be the first one I do once school is out and I've had a chance to stop and think and decompress and write up some real notes. So the next thing I want to show you is what I've started, another thing that I've started since I recorded, and that is my Lizzie cardigan. I'm actually calling it in my projects page, it is the cropped Lizzie. Um, the Lizzie cardigan is an open front cardigan. Mm, I had the designer's name in my mind and now I don't have it. Um, it'll be in the notes, I promise. Um, oh, what is her name? I don't remember her name. I'm sorry, but it's a beautiful pattern. Open front cardigan, top down, raglan, with a little bit of cable, and then a little bit of lace. It's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I'm knitting this out of Knit Picks Shine Sport. Oh, oh, in the sailor colorway. I was looking for the color the other day when I entered everything Ravelry, and I couldn't find it. This is a sport weight Pima Cotton and Modal yarn, or modal yarn, which is a man-made fiber, polyester probably. Um, it's There's 110 yards um, to 50 grams, and it's really nice. I When I first got it, I'm thinking, oh, it's fake yarn. It's got a man-made fiber in it. I don't know. It feels so nice and soft and drapey, and it seems to be holding up really well. When you look at it in the skein here, you can see a little fuzz around the edges, so I was really worried about what would happen as I'm knitting with it and I'm handling it, but it seems to be holding up very, very nicely. So, I think it looks really nice. So I'm at the point now, I've done the, I've done the neckline, I've done the top down raglan, and I, and it's very soft, you can see the needle going straight through. I've separated the sleeves, and then you pick back up at the starting at the top and going all the way around and you do a little bit of a cable to it so it's there at the neck right it's there at the neck and it goes around and it's at the back as well so there's the there's my neck there's my back so it's there at the back as well and it comes up and it goes around on the other side so there's a little bit of a cable and now I'm at the point now where I need to do my setup row for the lace and then I'm on to the lace portion that the, as the pattern is written, it's supposed to have a very long hem. It's supposed to come down and cover your bum, pretty much. But I want this for to be like a short, um, to be a short crop diversion that will cover up over sleeveless tops um, and strapless tops because I refuse to go without a bra. There's just some things that should not happen in the world, and me being without a bra is one of them. So that's what I intended for this, and I'm hoping that I can use this in the... Um, knit along that the stockinette zombies are doing because they're doing a summer tops knit along in May and June and I cast this on in May so I'm hoping that that counts even though it's not like a t-shirt type top I'm hoping that it counts because it's definitely for summer so that's the newest thing and that's I just really I really like this I'm very I'm very impressed with the yarn I'll have to see once again like I said I'll have to see what happens when I wash it and wear it I know I knit a top when I first started knitting. I knit a top for my sister out of this. I don't remember the name of the top, but it was a cute little um, like muscle shirt type thing that had a little lace, a little detail around the hem. Very cute. So I'll have to see how that wears up, wears up, but it's knitting wonderfully. And I want to say that that is it for the knitting. Let's look. Ah, oh, and I don't think I brought it up. Is this it? So that's it for the knitting right now. I am planning on knitting 
a shawl for my cousin. And I did not print it out, but I did do a little swatch because, again, this was supposed to have been for my Hogwarts um, projects, my owl project. So, can you tell? No, he's upside down. Can you tell what that's going to be? <laughs> Does it look like an owl? Because it's going to be an owl. This is going to be the Hogwarts Express. I got this to do the Camp Loopy Project 1, so I'm glamping this summer. And I'm in glamper number 5, which I think is the purple camper. Yes. Um, and this is going to be the Hogwarts Express. So I wanted to knit this for a while for my cousin, and I forgot to send, or I didn't forget, I just, I neglected to send her anything at Christmas time, which I usually send her a skein of hand spun yarn because she's a knitter too, and she likes that. Um, so I figured as a, as a, an apology, I'll make her a shawl and send her a skein of hand spun for like a Christmas in July type thing. And we'll, we're going to send a, her a package this summer. So this is Dragonfly Fibers Genie Sock in the, I'm not going to remember the colorway without looking, Hidalgo, yes, in the Hidalgo colorway, there's the name in case I'm pronouncing it wrong, and the genie sock is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, and I think that's going to be a really great color to wear with lots of different things. I think it'll be a very much neutral whether she wears cool colors or warm colors. I hope. I hope, I hope. So that is going to be that. I'm going to knit it on a size 6. I already did my swatching and everything. So on Sunday, if I, maybe I'll tell myself if I finish something. Like maybe if I catch my Cracker Jack up, I can cast on. Or if I finish Zuzu's Petals, I can cast on. Maybe. <laughs> um, and that is it. That kind of leads me into... Um, Everyone needs a thneed with enabling. Oh, no, I hear beads in here. I forgot to show. So Hogwarts Express is the cute little crescent-shaped, is it crescent-shaped? Crescent-shaped shawl with the little owls that go across, and it has, it needs beads for the owl's eyes. So these are going to be the eyes for that cute little owl. And the, the beads have like a, like a pale copper iridescent to them. I don't think it's coming out there like I would want it to. No, it's focusing on my finger. Okay, anyway, <laughs> those are the beads I'm going to use. So that is something that I just got for Camp Loopy, and that leads me to the Everyone Needs... Okay, so for Everyone Needs a Need, I got two club colorways in club yarn colorways in. And I think that's it. I've been a very good girl. So the first one to come in, the first one to come in was Neighborhood Fiber Company. And I'm a little afraid of this yarn. <laughs> Did I say that with her other shipments? So this is for camp, not camp. This is for the um, ooh, Club Awesome colorway. Or Club Awesome club. And in Club Awesome, it is a combination of Dragonfly Fibers, who is local, Neighborhood Fiber Company, who is local, and Cephalopod Yarns. So all of those companies are local to, like, the Baltimore area. And I'm in just outside there in D.C., so it, they're local to me, too. And so Carita of Neighborhood Fiber was the spring contributor. And she sent, I'm going to tell you about it, and then I'm going to show it to you because she sent her penthouse silk fingering, which is 100% silk. It's 500 yards. It's a gauge of 6 to 7 stitches per inch, so it's a fingering weight silk yarn. It weighs nothing. It's so light. Oh, my goodness. She doesn't have... Yes, she does. She has a weight on there. Four ounces. It's so light. Oh, my goodness. And it's pure silk, and it shines like nobody's business. It's beautiful. So I'm thinking super extra, very special shawl, or possibly, I'm thinking possibly like a table runner or something that would just sit there and look pretty 
and nobody touches it. <laughs> what? Silk? 100% silk? Really? Oh my gosh. I'm afraid to, I'm afraid to lean on it too hard. It's so pretty. It's a very bright color, so I don't even know that it is a color for me. So that was Club Awesome this time around. And I think I have one more shipment. I think there's only one more. This was May. We won't get one in June. We will get one in July. And I think that's it because I think it started last September. So I think the last one will be Cephalopod because I've gotten two Dragonfly Fibers, haven't I? I don't know. See, the problem is I'm also in the Dragonfly Fibers Club. <laughs> I get it a little confused. Although that is the other club that came in. So I also got the Dragonfly Fibers colorway um, for May. This is Club Dragonfly. And we got yarn to make mitt, or we got yarn in a pattern for these mitts. The mitts are, do we have a name? No, we don't. <laughs> They did not name the pattern, but the, oh yes, it's called a Golden Landscape Mitts. The Golden Landscape Mitts go with the club yarn for this month. And the club yarn is this, which is called the Tree of Life. And I kind of like it. I'm not really a yellow person though, so I'm, I'm wondering... I'm wondering, although it would be a great gift to knit those mitts up and give them away, it would be a really great gift because I am not a yellow person at all, but I really like the idea of the yarn. Oh, excuse me for going out of frame again. I really like the idea of the yarn with the mitts. And can you see the little, yeah, you can see the little raised texture on those mitts. So I think that would be really, really pretty. And I love these colorways. This was, she said, a... a uh, um, kind of an experiment where they oh yeah she said it's a new color inspired by Picasso's Tree of Life um, and so they've been doing a lot of stuff with different painters lately and I really like it I had, remember I had gotten the um, a Vincent Van Gogh colorway at the homespun yarn party so I really really like that this is their dragon sock right yes this is their dragon sock 390 yards to a 4-ounce skein of 100% superwash merino. So it definitely should be mitts or a shawl or a cowl or something, and not necessarily socks because there's no nylon in it. So, I don't know. I'm anxious to see kind of what what that would become and who, who those might be gifted for or go to. So, very interesting. And those are my two acquisitions as of late. I did not do thing two again. I'm still stuck on the white skein of yarn. I want to get that finished because I know Tour de Fleece is coming up soon with the Tour de France. Um, so I want to kind of knock that out soon and get that out of the way um, so that I can spin some fun colored stuff and then maybe spin, no, I'm not going to tell myself that I'll spin <laughs> a, a bobbin of white for Tour de Fleece because that takes a lot out of my hands, which I think is why it's taken me so long to move through the one bobbin that I said I would do. Um, so I'm just, I don't know, I'm spinning as I come to it. I get so tempted though. The Fat Cat Knits colorway for the month is absolutely beautiful, especially as a gradient. And I really want to try doing a gradient again and seeing if I can get a thinner yarn and more yardage out. I'm just, oh, I'm so, I'm so tempted. Uh, but I have to spin what I have first, right? So. I think that's going to be it for this time. Definitely long enough. About 40 minutes. Not too bad. Hopefully it, I didn't ramble too much at the beginning. You know, I get talking about my kid and I get, you know, a little bit off. Um, the, and one other thing I want to mention before I go is I do have something that I want to get back to over the summer if I get time. So once I get a couple more things off the needles. I don't know. I showed this a while ago. I think it's been a while. But I started a clap o tea. I think I started last summer. <laughs> out of some yarn that my sister gifted me many, many moons ago when she was overseas. 
And so I would really like to get back to the clap OT. I had just started, I want to say, yes, I had just started dropping stitches. So I would really like to get back to that so that I have that for the fall. Um, and so that's kind of in my summer plans as well. And I think that now finally does it. I'm looking around. I don't see anything else. So, all right. Hopefully that wasn't too long for you. Uh, it was very nice to talk to you guys again. I hope everybody enjoys. And until next time, I hope your knitting makes you happy.